from the San Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to San Juan High School, where this afternoon the San Juan Broncos will take on the Canab Cowboys in the final regular season game of the 1985 football season. I'm Neil Joslin for Sideline Productions with Steve Burton. Shaw and Steve, today's Hello. ball game should be a good ball game. Yes, I think we're in for a treat tonight, Neil. At midfield right now, you can see the toss of the coin to start the game. The San Juan team has won the toss, and they will receive. Captains for San Juan were Stacy Ozzie, number 34, Robert Mance, number 76. Captains for the Canab Cowboys, number 50, Anthony Lacordi, and number 20, Chad Reedhead. So the Broncos will start this ball game with... Uh, an offensive possession, and right now, I believe we're going to have some introductions of uh, some seniors, some recognition here. The Broncos uh, come into this ball game with a record of five wins and two losses. The Canab Cowboys come into the ball game with a record of six wins and no losses. Canab is the number one team rated in the 1A division in the state of Utah. San Juan uh, has dropped out of a couple of polls. They are number three in one poll. They uh, lost last week to Bloomfield big. The final score in that one, 26 to 6. The Broncos on the losing end. The week before last, uh, they beat Moab by a big score. I think it was something like 47 to 7 or something. And 47-29 uh, was the final score in that one. The last time we saw the Broncos was three weeks ago when they were playing uh, at home against the uh, Cortez Panthers, and they lost that one 14 to 8 in a heartbreaker. But uh, San Juan is at full strength this week. Everybody's healthy. Everybody should be ready for a, a good ball game. This is a very important ball game, Steve, because the uh, if the San Juan Broncos win tonight, they will play at home next week in the first quarter final game, and that home field advantage is always important when you get into the playoff That's situations. Right. Some of the seniors being introduced on the field right now, Gary Black walking across there, Stacy Yazzie, Kyle Myers. The Kanab Cowboys are the premier team in the region in uh, the 1A division of uh, Utah Athletics. They uh, are 6-0, and as we mentioned before, and they uh, beat, can beat their closest rival, Beaver, a couple of weeks ago in double overtime. The final score of that one, 12-6, so they play some good football. They like to throw the football. They've got a lot of speed. They play good defense. They've got some good size up front on the line that could give the Broncos a little bit of problem. We'll start with their defensive lineup, since that's what they're going to start on. Up front on the uh, front line, they've got Darren Gifford. He's a 174-pound uh, sophomore. He's one tackle. Gene Heaton is the other tackle. He's 6'2", 230. Clint Waters is the left end. He's 6'2", 189 pounds. Anthony LaCorte is the other end. He's 6'160 pounds. At the uh, linebackers, they'll run four linebackers. They've got... Uh, Chad Reedhead, he's a 5'8", 150-pound senior. Lad Bunting, a 6-foot, 175-pound senior. Ricky Lamb is the other linebacker, 168-pound junior. And Kelly Riding, a 5'8", 160-pound senior. In the defensive backfield, they'll have Nolan Reedhead, a 5'9", 150-pound sophomore. Clint Glover, a 5'10", 145-pound junior. He's also the quarterback. And they'll have Darren Ott. 5'10", 155-pound senior. So the Cowboys, pretty good size, and they have a lot of speed. They could pre present some problems tonight for the Broncos. Starting offense for the San Juan Broncos tonight will be Eric Grover at the center. The guards are Lauren Cook. He's 5'8", 140-pound senior. Robert Mance, the other guard, 6'190 pounds. The tackles, Richie Monson, 6'4", 240. He's a senior. Jeremy Liverton, 5'10", 195 pounds. He's a junior. The tight end is Jimmy Swenson, 6'3", 170-pound junior. One of the split ends will be John Schmidt. He'll probably start tonight, 5'11", 155-pound senior. And Schmidt, if I'm not mistaken, has scored a touchdown through the air in every ball game this year for the San Juan Broncos. So uh, he's tearing them up, and he's going to hope to uh, keep that streak going. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of this ball game right after these messages. Neil Joslin along with Steve Burtonshaw back here at San Juan High School. We're about ready to go for the opening kickoff. We uh, broke for the uh, Star Spangled Banner just a moment ago, but let's run down the rest of that San Juan offensive line or offense uh, for the San Juan Broncos. Jens Nielsen, he'll be the quarterback, 5'11", 155 uh, pounds. He's a junior. 
Stacy Ozzy will be in the backfield, 5'8", 205 pound senior. Kyle Meyer will be the other running back, 6'1", 150 pound senior. And Kuhia Fisher will be the up back. He's 6'1", uh, 180 pounds, and he's also a senior. So the Broncos at full speed tonight. Look for a good ball game. Hey, grab a seat, grab something to eat, and sit back and enjoy the ball game. Back deep to receive for the San Juan Broncos. Cahia Fisher standing on his five-yard line. At the 10 will be John Schmidt. And it looks like uh, Jason Tate, the other man, back. Yazi is the short man. He's on the 25-yard line. Kicking off for the Kanab Cowboys. Will be number 10. That's, uh, let's see. It's Nolan Reedhead. The kick goes to Schmidt. He comes to the near side at the 30. Gets a good block by Brett Webb, and he's out across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and that's where the Broncos will take over first and 10. The Broncos, five wins and two losses, need this ball game to be able to have the home field advantage next week in their first quarterfinal game of the state playoffs. The Kanab Cowboys right now playing for a little bit of pride. They're 6-0, and, and they'd like to keep that perfect record intact. Jens Nielsen is the quarterback. He'll set up in, with Ivax in the backfield, Stacey Ozzie and Kyle Meyer. The up back or the wing back is Kahia Fisher. On first down, Nielsen wants to throw the ball. Lots of pressure. He dumps the ball off, but he's tackled in the backfield by number 35. That's Darren Gifford. And Gifford is a 175-pound sophomore. Jens gets the ball away. It's incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10. Myers was blocking. Didn't see the ball coming that time. Two wide men to the far side. That looks like uh, David Lee and Kahia Fisher. The handoff goes to Meyer. Right up the middle. He fumbles the football. And the Cowboys have recovered on about the 44-yard line. Let's see if the play was blown dead before the ball was fumbled. We'll wait and see. There's been no indication, but the referee now is saying that the ball will be down where Myers went down. There will be no fumble, and the uh, Broncos get a big break to start this game. We don't need those. Myers gained about five yards. They'll give him four. That'll bring up third down and six. Long yardage for the Broncos. Look for a passing situation right now. John Schmidt goes wide to the left. Kahia Fisher is the slot man on the left. Pitch out goes to Aaron Jones in the ball game. Tries to turn the corner. Lots of pursuit by the Cowboys. He turns the corner, breaks a tackle, and gets out near midfield for the first down. And it will be good enough for a first down. Give uh, Jones about seven yards on the game. And that'll be first and 10 for the Broncos on their own 48-yard line. Good run that time There's by that Jones. That's first speed that we've seen before. He's quick. Jones got some good blocking up front by John Schmidt, Jeremy Liberton, Kahia Fisher also helping out. So the Broncos are the first and 10 on their own 48-yard line. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, split backs in the backfield. Handoff goes to Meyer straight ahead, and he gets down inside the midfield stripe to the 45-yard line before he's brought down there by number 68. Tony Robinson, the man that made the tackle. And that'll bring up uh, second and three, gain of seven for Meyer that time. Good blocking up front by Grover, Manson, Cook. Richie Monson also helping out that last time. Full house backfield for the Broncos on second down. Handoff goes to Meyer. He tries the left side. A lot of white jerseys in the area. He may be close to the first down, however. Jeremy Liberton comes up off the pile along with uh, Lauren Cook. Got a flag over on this right side of the line. Penalty now. marker is down. Right, Darren Gifford in on the tackle along with Kelly Riding and Anthony Lacordi. They're talking to the Kanab Cowboys, so it looks like it's going to be against the Broncos. And that'll take back a near first, what might have been a first down. And it'll march it back and bring up second down. And they'll bring it back across midfield to the 49-yard line. Holding penalty against the Broncos, and that hurts. Broncos were inside uh, Cowboy territory at the 40-yard line, and they'll be now back inside their own territory at the 49-yard line with second down and nine. Nielsen, the quarterback, 
Hands off to the first man through. Yazzie, he cannot get the football. And number 35 falls on it. That's uh, Nolan Reedhead, I believe. Darren Giffen, Darren Gifford, the man that recovered the fumble. And so the Cowboys, with a big break, they've got first and 10 at midfield, and the Cow Cowboys come away with a big break that time. And that's the kind of thing we talked about before the ball game. Uh, the Broncos cannot afford the turnovers and the mistakes against the Cowboys. So the Cowboys come out on offense for the first time. Clint Glover is the quarterback. He hands off to Chad Reedhead. He comes to the near side. John Schmidt strings it out. Tackle is made by Billy Slavens. And Stacy Ozzie also in there, number 65, leading the way. Gene Heaton put on a couple of good blocks. Reedhead will gain about five. That'll bring up second down and five for the Cowboys. Billy Slavin's in there right now for the San Juan Broncos. In the defensive, uh, he's one of the linebackers, along with uh, Stacy Yazzie. Glover, the quarterback. This time he hands off to Darren Ott. And Ott tries the other side, and he's going to get uh, out close to first down yardage. He'll be just a little bit short. David Lee and Jason Watkins make the tackle. And that'll be short of the first down by about two yards, bring up second, uh, third down. Set that uh, San Juan up line for you. Jason Watkins, the middle guard, Richie Monson, Eric Gloss, the tackles. Gary Black, Jason Tate, the uh, ends. Looks like Stacy Ozzie and Billy Slavens are in there now at the uh, linebackers. John Schmidt, Cahia Fisher, uh, Meyer is also in there at the defensive backfield. Glover on uh, third down, hands straight up the middle to Reedhead. Now, uh, off the man, they got the football, number 33. He'll be very close to the first down. It uh, will depend on where they mark the football. They're spotting it right just inside the 40-yard line, so it could be a first down. It'll be very close. They'll take a timeout. And with eight minutes and 32 seconds to play in the first quarter, no score in our ball game. We'll pause for these messages. Put up a first down. The Cowboys will have the ball first and 10 at the Bronco 40. Darren Ott got the first down that time. Just enough yardage. So the Cowboys keep possession. Glover again, the quarterback. Straight back to pass. He wants to hit a man on the outside. Thrown just behind Clint Waters. Number 12, the tight end. 6'2", 189 pounds. Set that up front line for you on the Cowboys. Ken Entz is the uh, center. Tackle the guards are Gene Heaton and Anthony McClory. The tackles Kenny Rhodes and Tony Robinson. Clint Waters is one tight end. Lad Bunting is the other tight end. The uh, wing back is uh, Kelly Riding. And the two backs in the backfield, Darren Ott, Chad Reedhead. The quarterback, of course, is Clint Glover. Second and ten for the Cowboys after the incomplete pass. Reedhead comes to the near side. He's got some blocking out in front of him, but he's going to be tackled by Robert Mance and Kyle Meyer. Anthony LaCourty leading the way along with uh, Gene Heaton, number 65. Heaton is a big man, 6'2", uh, 230 pounds. LaCourty, 6'160", so he had a, some good company leading the way that time. Well, they've tried the left side, the right side, up the middle, and a pass. They're just checking us out right now, I believe. First quarter of a game like this is always a situation where you just kind of spar back and forth and feel the other team out. Third and nine. Glover back to pass. He wants to throw. He's got a man downfield. Intercepted by Yazzie. Yazzie's out uh, to the 45-yard line across the 45 to the 46. Gene Heaton, the man that made the tackle, along with number 64. Number 64 would be, uh, well, we don't have a 64. Okay. But anyhow, Yazzie gives the... Broncos a big break that time. He's out across the 46-yard line. First and 10, Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, with full house in the backfield. Hands off to Meyer. Meyer is hit at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play that time. Looked like Lat Bunning, the tight end, uh, the defensive end that came over and made the tackle. They'll give him about a yard. That'll bring up second down and nine for the Broncos. The sun is going behind the clouds right now. Kind of an overcast day, but a good day for football. Not too cold, not too hot. Second down for Jens Nielsen in the San Juan Broncos. David Lee in the ball game now at a wide receiver position. Handoff goes to Black in the ball game. Black gets about four. That'll bring up third down and five for San Juan. Yeah. 
6.44 to play in the first quarter. There's no score. Both teams have had the football one time, and both teams have coughed it up. Right now, the Broncos have it near midfield at their own 49-yard line, third down and six. Nielsen, the quarterback, wants to throw. Lots of pressure from the back. He's got a man downfield, John Schmidt. It's tipped, and Ott comes up with the interception. Ott comes back across the field. He's out to the 40-yard line, out near midfield, down inside San Juan territory at the 45-yard line before he's dragged out of bounds by Richie Monson. Clint Waters, the defensive end, came in and put some pressure on Jens Nielsen. Nielsen threw the ball a little bit behind uh, John Schmidt, who was double covered. Schmidt grabbed the ball and tipped it up, which is something a receiver should never do. And Ott was right there with the old famous tip drill. Comes up with the interception and runs it back inside San Juan territory to the 46-yard line. So Pretty two looking little run back. Two turnovers by the Broncos. And again, the Cowboys had the ball first and 10 inside San Juan territory. There's a handoff to the first man through. That's Ott, and he's met very rudely by Stacy Yazzie, Jason Watkins, and it looks like Robert Mance also coming up off the pile to help with the tackle. He'll get one yard. That'll bring up second down and nine. I think he got his bell rung that time. I heard it clear up here. This could very well turn into a defensive battle because both teams play good defense, and defense, to be honest with you, is the strongest part of the San Juan team. Riding goes split to the far side. Split backs in the backfield. Clint Waters is split a little bit on the near side. Glover wants to throw on second down. He gets outside. He's got a man downfield. Riding cannot hang on to the football, and he's going to be hammered by Cahia Fisher at the 36-yard line. Riding was wide open that time. Glover got outside the penetration, had a clear field down uh, to the receiver, but uh, Riding couldn't hang on to the football. Third down and nine for the Cowboys. Good hit that time by the by Fisher. The defensive backs for San Juan, Meyer, Schmidt, Lee, and Fisher all hit hard. Riding comes to the near side this time. The slot man is Clint Waters. Back to pass again is Glover. He wants to throw lots of pressure, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. Robert Mance and Jason Tate, the first ones that hit him. Jason Watkins uh, and Stacy Yazzie come in to finish the job. That'll be a loss all the way back inside uh, Cowboy territory at their own 49-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down and 15. And so the Cowboys will punt the ball away. Lad Bunning will punt. Jason Tate and Cahia Fisher standing back on their own 20-yard line. The punt is nearly blocked. It's a short punt. It hits on the 35-yard line, or it would have hit on the 35-yard line, but Stacy Yazzie grabbed it in midair, runs it out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Good heads up play that time by Yazzie and gives San Juan good field position on their own 42-yard line. Yazzie that time could have let the ball fall, but it could have uh, very easily taken a good cowboy bounce. He elected to just grab it in traffic and gives the Broncos a big uh, field ad advantage. You gotta be brave to grab it with all that many guys standing around. Yazzie's got the guts for it. Here's first down to Fisher. Fisher's out across uh, the 45 yard line to the 46 before he's dragged down there by a number of white jerseys. Number 10, Nolan Reedhead coming up off the pile to make the tackle. Second down and six, they give uh, Fisher four yards. Split backs for Jens Nielsen on second down. Again, the slot man is uh, Fisher. Nielsen wants to throw the ball. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Heaton, the man that grabbed it, or tipped it away. Some big guys there on that line. That's tough throwing. I tell you, the Cowboys are loaded with size. Number 68, Tony Robinson also in there putting some pressure on Jens Nielsen. That'll bring up third down and six, and the Broncos will look for uh, a passing down right here. John Schmidt and Cahia Fisher go split to the far side. Shotgun formation for Jens Nielsen. Wants to throw the football. He's got Stacy Yazzie out here. Yazzie's gonna have the first down. Down to the 30-yard line, inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Yard line, and the Cowboys will bring up a first and 
Gain of 28 on the play. Lad Bunting and Nolan Reed had to come over and make the tackle along with Dana Knott, or Darren Knott, I should say. And so the Broncos are driving inside uh, Cowboy territory at the Cowboy 29-yard line, first and 10. Big pass play that time for Stacey Ozzie and Jens Nielsen. On first down, the handoff goes to Myers on the left side, and he's going to be hammered. Number 24, Ricky Lamb, the man that made the first contact and dragged Myers down after a gain of about one or two. We'll see where they mark it. They'll give him two yards. That'll bring up second down and eight. Deepest penetration by any team, uh, either team, in the first half. With 3.16 to play in the first quarter, the Broncos down inside uh, the 26-yard line, right close to the 25 on uh, second down. Handoff goes to Meyer again. Meyer is met right at the line of scrimmage. He keeps his legs churning and drives forward for maybe a yard. Nolan Reedhead and Lamb again also on the tackle for the uh, Cowboys. And that'll bring up third down and about four. It's tough old yardage up the middle like that. Now you look at the uh, Cowboys up front line. Darren Gifford, Gene Heaton, Clint Waters, Anthony LaCordia, all big men. Linebackers, Ricky Lamb, Chad Reedhead, Glad Bunting, they're all big. And the Broncos are going to have to blow them out if they're going to get in the yardage. The handoff again goes, looks like this time Tate, the man that got the football. And he'll get a couple. He'll be close to the first down. I don't know if he's going to get it or not. We'll wait and see. It will be a first down, so give Tate three yards and give the Broncos a first down inside the 20 yard line at the 18. And with 2.26 to play in the first quarter, the Broncos are driving. Got a good drive going. The spark plug was the 28-yard uh, pass play to Stacy Yazzi. That set up the last first down and put the Broncos in Cowboy territory. Handoff goes to Meyer. Meyer's met by Heaton. He might get a yard, but again, the tough yardage in the trenches for the San Juan Broncos. These guys are tough out there. Well, they've been running to the right side. Lauren Cook, Richie Monson against Clint Waters and Gene Heaton. They're the two biggest defensive linemen for the Cowboys. 6'2", 6'2", 230, and 189, respectively. Going right into the fire, huh? There's the handoff to Yazi. Yazi's got a big hole. He's down near the 10-yard line. Inside the 10, close to the 5. And Yazi got a big hole that time. Monson and Swenson and Cook opened up a big hole. And so Yazi will pick up uh, close to nine yards on the carry. And that'll put the ball close to the five yard line. It'll be first and goal, we'll call it the five. And San Juan Broncos driving with 139 to play in the first quarter. Schmidt goes split to the far side. Fisher is split to the near side. I backs for Nielsen on first and goal. Chance keeps the football, drives forward. And uh, looks like he's going to be about two yards inside the five to about the three-yard line before he's wrapped up by the interior of that defensive line by the Cowboys. David Lee comes into the ball game now with a play. And it's been a pretty good first uh, quarter. Both teams have had the football a little sloppy at the beginning. Both teams turned the ball over. But the Broncos uh, driving right now. They put a good drive together. The drive started on their own 42-yard line. There's a handoff to Black, and Black's going to be in the end zone. Good blocking that time again by Monson. And Black broke one tackle at the line of scrimmage and scored it into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown run with one minute to play in the first quarter. The Broncos go on top six to nothing. You just can't, can't overstate the importance of converting on those first downs, Neil, and keep that drive alive. Well, the Broncos did what they needed to do that time. They held on to the football, got a couple of big plays by, from Stacy Yazzie. And now Jens Nielsen will hold for Yazzie on the extra point attempt. There's the snap, a high snap. It's down. Yazzie's kick is up, and it's good. And the Broncos take a 7-0 lead with one minute to play in the first quarter, and we'll be back after these messages. In the first quarter, Gary Black scoring on a three-yard run over his right side. Stacy Ozzie converted the extra point, and the Broncos have the lead. Back to receive the kickoff for the uh, Kanab Cowboys. They've got uh, Chad Reedhead back there, Darren Ott, and it looks like number 24, Ricky Lamb. 
Yazi will kick it away. There's the kick. It'll be taken by Ott. Now Ott will let it go out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. The Broncos will kick it away again. This game is brought to you on Channel 13 by the following sponsors. Broadway Furniture, Kent's Foods in uh, Monticello, the patio and Blanding, Palmer's Office Supply in Blanding, Cortez Camera, and the San Juan Theater in Blanding. And we'd like to thank all of our sponsors for helping to bring you these games. Uh, Sideline Productions, we'd like to thank everybody that's uh, taken part this year in making these games possible. We've enjoyed bringing them to you and uh, hope you've enjoyed watching them on Channel 13. Yazi will kick it off again. They'll mark it back to the 35-yard line this time. So the Cowboys might get a little better field position. We're ready to go. The referee's waiting to blow his whistle. One minute to play in the uh, first quarter. Broncos on top, 7 to nothing. Again, the kick will go to Ott at the 10. He'll come out to the 15, to the 20. Good coverage downfield. Schmidt misses him. Ott comes to the near side. He gets out near the 20-yard line to the 25-yard line. Finally dragged out of bounds by Aaron Jones. And it looks like Stacy Yazzie also down helping out on the coverage, the, the kickoff man. John Schmidt had a chance to grab uh, Ott back at the 15-yard line, missed the tackle, and Art, Ott did a good job to get out to about the 25-yard line for a first and 10. So the Cowboys go on offense one more time. Clint Glover will be the quarterback, number 11, 5'10", 145-pound junior. Darren Ott and Chad Reed head in the backfield along with Kelly Riding. Riding will come to the near side. He's the wing back. The tight end on the near side is uh, Clint Waters. Glover on first down gives to Ott. Ott's got some running room. Good blocking on the right side of that line. He's across the 30, out near the 35-yard line. And that'll be close to a first down. Watkins makes the tackle, along with Fisher. They'll give him nine. That'll bring up second down and uh, two. Good blocking by Kenny Rhodes, Lad Bunting, and Anthony Lacordi on that right side. Chad Reed had also doing a good job leading the way on the blocking as, as a running back. And that's the end of the first quarter. There's no gun, but that will end the first quarter. Right. And uh, with a score of 7 to nothing, the San Juan Broncos leading the Canab Cowboys. We'll be back after these messages. Let's play. Again, the Kanab Cowboys, the number one rated team in Division 1A in the state of Utah. They are the premier team in that division. And they're hoping to keep their streak alive. They are 6-0 on the season. Moving on the line, there's going to be encroachment. Jason Watkins, the man, will be flagged. He'll be offsides against Watkins, and that'll be a five-yard mark off an automatic first down for the Kanab Cowboys. They'll take the ball out to the 40-yard line, just inside the 40 at the 39. And the Cowboys have a first and 10. That, that kind of play really Ouch. makes it easy to get a first down. Nobody even has to slap the leather. <laughs> so on first down, the Cowboys send riding to the far side. Again, split backs in the backfield for Clint Glover on first and 10 from the 39-yard line. Handoff goes to Reedhead. Reedhead breaks a couple of tackles. He's out across midfield. And he's down inside the 45-yard uh, line of the Broncos at the 43. Good blocking that time by the uh, right side of that line. Kenny Rhodes, Anthony LaCourty doing a good job. Lad Bunting also work, working on uh, the tight end position, throwing a couple of good blocks. And uh, Reedhead gets a big gain down inside the 45-yard line. They'll call it to the 44-yard line. Cowboys will have the ball first and 10 inside Bronco territory. He's pretty quick himself, isn't he? They've got a lot of speed in that Cowboy team. Glover wants to throw on first down. He's got a man open, Bunting. Lad Bunting, the man that caught the football, the tight end on the right side. And he's down close to a first down. They'll give him about eight, I believe, and that'll bring up second down and two. Fisher on the coverage for the Broncos. And the Cowboys putting together a good offensive drive here to start the second quarter. 10.46 to play in the first half. 7-0 our score. In case you just joined us, Gary Black scored for the Broncos on a three-yard run after a drive that started on the San Juan 44-yard line. Again, the handoff goes to Reedhead. He's got the first down and more. 
Big Richie Monson hammers him to the ground, but not before he's got the first down. They'll mark it inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. If I'm reading my markers right, it'll be a 30. Is that about right? Let's see. No, they'll call it inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. It's kind of hard from this angle to see where exactly the ball is. I wish they'd line those mid, mid hash marks. That's first and 10 for the Cowboys at the 34-yard line of the Broncos. Glover wants to throw on first down again. He's got a man open. This time it's Reedhead, and Reedhead breaks a couple of tackles. David Lee comes up to help out. Along with uh, like Lauren Cook also helping out. They'll give him about four yards in the carry. Now they'll mark it out about six yards, bring up uh, second down and four for the Cowboys. And the Cowboys starting to throw the football a little bit more here in the second quarter. Second down and four for the Cowboys. Glover wants to throw again on second down. He's got a man across the middle. Incomplete to Clint Waters, the tight end who comes across the middle. John Schmidt breaks it up. And that'll bring up third down and four. The ball is inside the uh, San Juan 25 yard line. Well, actually it's right about the 26 yard line. Third down and we'll call it a long three. The way they've got the markers set right now, it looks more like three than four. Riding goes to the far side. Split backs again for Glover on third down and short. Glover hands off to Reedhead. Reedhead's got the first down. He's inside the 25, close to the 22-yard line. And that should be a Cowboy first down. It is. First and 10 at the San Juan 21 is where they'll finally mark it. And the Cowboys marching here. 10-01 uh, to play in the first half. And the Cowboys are driving in Bronco territory. Reedhead and Ott in the backfield. Riding goes to the far side. He's the split man. Glover wants to throw on first down. He's looking for Riding in the end zone. Back on coverage is Meyer, and Meyer breaks it up. That was a good developing play, but Meyer did a good job to stick right with Riding as he made the cut up field. And that was, could have been an interception for the it Broncos. Like it was gone. That will bring up uh, second and 10 from the 21 yard line. The Cowboys started this drive uh, on their own 34 yard line. Back in the first quarter, and they've run down to 941 to play in the second quarter. Again, Glover wants to throw. It's tipped by Gary Black. Ott picks it up. Mance drags him around. There's a lot of coverage, a lot of pursuit by the Broncos. Finally, Mance did a good job. He grabbed Art's, Ott's arm and dragged him around a couple of times. Ott broke that tackle, broke another tackle, but uh, finally Stacy Ozzy and a number of other blue jerseys come over and stop him. Loss of four on the play, and that'll bring up third down and 14 for the Canab Cowboys. Out inside, uh, right around the 25-yard line of the Broncos, and Broncos defense stiffening up that time. Yeah, they're tough. Gary Black actually tipped that pass as it left uh, Glover's hand. And Ott had to come back and uh, catch the ball on a comeback. So on third down and 14, Glover wants to throw, roll out. Looking downfield, he's got a man open. It's caught and it's a touchdown. Number 36, Lad Budding, the man that caught the football in the end zone. He was the tight end on the left side. He came right across the field in just his crossing pattern. Glover did a good job to roll out. The Cowboys gave him plenty of time, and he threw the ball. 25-yard touchdown pass from Clint Glover to Lad Bunting, and that makes it a little closer, 6-7 to seven now. The Broncos on top by one, and the Cowboys will try now for the extra point. Well, the Cowboys did a good job that time of giving Glover a lot of time to throw the football. He did a good job rolling out. He got outside the defensive coverage, and Bunting just did a straight yeah. slant pattern across the middle, and it was wide open. He got behind Schmidt, and he got behind Meyer, 
and uh, he was wide open for the touchdown. That ball's been right on the money just about every time, too. Well, that's one thing the Cowboys can do. They've always been able to throw the football, and uh, when they can't run, they've always got the pass to come back to. And that's uh, something the Broncos haven't done too much today. They haven't thrown the football only a couple of times, I believe. Four Lee times. had an interception, so... So Coach Arlen Hafen has talked it over with his offense. They're going to make a decision now as to go for the extra point on the two-point conversion or for the one point. And they'll come up to the line of scrimmage trying for the two-point conversion. Over the quarterback. The handoff will go to big number 30. He fumbles the football. See if we can find number 30. He's a big man. That's Danny Bartlett. And Danny Bartlett, they've got him listed at 137 pounds, but I'm sure he's a lot bigger than that. Yeah, that's a big guy. So the extra point attempt will not be good, and the score remains 7-6. to six. The Broncos on top of the Cowboys with 8.44 to play in the first half, and we'll be back. After six yards minutes. for the touchdown. And a play that started with about one minute to go in the uh, first quarter. They've run the clock down to 8.44 to play in the half. The touchdown punch came on a 25-yard pass from Clint Glover to Ladd Bunting. The extra point attempt was no good, and the Bucks or the Broncos, I should say, lead 7-6 to six with 8.44 to play. Lamb will kick the ball off for the Cowboys, a short kick. Be taken on the run by Jason Tate. He fumbles the football, picked up by John Schnoe. He's gone. Fisher. He's gone. Fisher breaks the middle, and he's going to score. Turn out the lights, baby. This one's all over. Fisher got that football after Tate fumbled it. Tate fumbled it on about the 25-yard line. Fisher picked it up. And he ran right through the middle of everybody on the Cowboys coverage team for a 75-yard touchdown run. And when Fisher gets in the open, there's nobody hey, very often that's going to catch him. That. You don't see it any better. And he knew he had it, too. He was taking those long strides downfield. And there was nobody near him within 20 yards on the Cowboys team that was going to catch him. And that's a big turnaround for the Broncos. That's the kind of big play they need in a game like this that uh, they haven't had a lot of times this year. You always wish you could see one of those. When it comes, it's sure worth it, you know? So Fisher grabs the ball, runs 75 yards for the touchdown. With 8.35 to play, that, that took about uh, nine seconds. <laughs> Yazzie will try the extra point. There's a flag. Jens Nielsen picks it up. He's looking for some help. He throws it back across field. Yazzie has it, and Yazzie might get into the end zone. He fumbles the ball. The extra point's not going to be any good, but remember, there was a marker down before the play ever got started. That took and more time than the run back just developing that play. Well, it'll all go for naught. Jens Nielsen did a lot of running around. A lot of people, Yazzie did a lot of running for <laughs> nothing. The play will be brought back. And that's got to hurt the Cowboys. They they come down and they score. They drive 66 yards for a touchdown, take a lot of time off the clock, finally get in a nice pass play. <laughs> they don't get the extra point, and then the next kickoff, the Broncos run it back 75 yards for a touchdown. And the, the kicker on that is the ball was fumbled yeah. and picked up by another man, and he runs it back. And so that's that's got to be a letdown for the Cowboys. See their timing but, uh, off just a hair, I guess. Oh, I tell you. Well, it looked like when they saw the fumble come, they kind of let up a little bit. And, and then when Fisher they let up, gone. Fisher just put on a burst of speed, ran right up the middle. And now the Broncos look like they're going to go for the two-point conversion. Eric Grover is the center. Tate's in the backfield along with, along with Black. Black gets the call. And even though he put a good second effort on, he will be short of the goal line, and that will not uh, bring about the two-point conversion. 13 to 6, our score with 8:36 to play, 8:35 to play in the first half. We've run nine seconds off the clock. The Broncos on top, and we'll pause for a commercial. Break. Ambrose Tashini is back, along with number 24 Lamb, and number 20, 34, I should say. That's Daryl uh, Robinson. Robinson's out to the 30-yard line, and he's going to be stopped right at the 30 by a number of black jerseys. Billy Slavin's in there. Stacy Yazzie also in there. Yazzie's an amazing player. On defense, he's all over. 
and uh, talking to a couple of the coaches on uh, Tuesday, they were saying that Yazi plays so hard on offense, our defense, that by the end of the second half, he's about wiped out to play both ways. And you got to give him credit. That kid is on, in on every tackle, just about. So the Cowboys take over first and 10 on their own 31-yard line. Glover, the quarterback. Split backs in the backfield. Riding his foot to the far side. The handoff comes to Darren Ott. Ott gets a couple of blocks, Ooh. and he is hammered by the man we just talked about, Stacy Yazzie. Yazzie comes up and puts a punishing hit on Darren Ott. Ott will get a yard. That'll bring up, now they'll give him three yards. That'll give him uh, second down and seven. But Yazzie, again, right on the spot to make the stop. He's done a great job. We're about to witness one of those good-looking deer season sunsets, too, Neil. Ah, it's a gorgeous nice evening. evening. Cloud cover's going away a little bit. we got some uh, nice pink skies, and uh, it's going to be a good day. Good hunting season, I think, yeah. it's going to be. Glover, the quarterback, on second and seven, straight back to pass. Got some time. He finds a man open. That's Waters. Waters tips the ball over, and Fisher standing right behind him, a little bit mad that he couldn't uh, dive and get the interception. David Lee also back on the coverage. That'll bring up third down and seven. Pass thrown just a little bit behind Waters. And good pressure that time by, uh, look like Manson, or uh, I should say uh, Tate, Tate and Manson on the left side of that Bronco line to put some pressure on and make uh, Glover throw the ball a little bit too soon. Reed head and not again in the backfield, riding as the slot man to the far side. Glover wants to throw. Looking downfield, it's intercepted. Kyle Meyer has the interception. He's down inside the 25 to the 21. When it rains, it pours. I think the ball was intended for riding. Meyer just came up and at the knees made the scoop. He picked that one off at the 40, runs it back to the 25-yard line, the 20-yard line, 20-yard return, and the Broncos are in the... Fat City right now, they got another chance to score. First and 10 inside the uh, position. 20 yard line of the Cowboys. And now there's a timeout on the field with 728 to play in the first half. 13 to six our score and will return. And they will receive a t-shirt courtesy of Navajo T-shirt and Design here in Blanding. Friendly folks down there, Terrence, Tom, and uh, the other people at uh, Navajo T-shirt and Design generous enough to uh, help us out with an award for the player of the week this year. We really do appreciate that. And uh, it's always a tough job when you watch the Broncos to decide who's gonna be the offensive and defensive player. Can we get a whole bunch of t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. The Broncos have the ball first and 10. The Cowboys have talked it over. The ball's on the Cowboy 20 yard line. John Schmidt is the split end to the near side. Eye backs in the backfield. Tate and Yazzie. The short back is Fisher. The handoff will go to Jason Tate, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Number 12, Clint Waters makes the stop. Also coming up off the pile is number 78. That's uh, changed my lineup here. 78, we'll find him on our rosters. Kenny Rhodes. They'll give uh, Tate one yard. That'll bring up second and nine. And it's starting to get a little bit chilly as the sun goes down behind the mountains. 6.58 to play in the first half. Fisher in motion to the far side. Handoff goes to Meyer. Meyer goes down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Monson out there leading the way in the blocking. Number 35 makes the tackle. That's uh, Darren Gifford. That'll bring up third down and three. Meyer gets about six yards, or five yards. Yazzie's out of the ball game now. Gary Black comes in at a running back. So Jens Nielsen has uh, Meyer and Black in the backfield. Again, the up back is uh, Fisher. The handoff goes straight ahead to Gary Black, and Black fights his way forward. Down inside the 10 to about the uh, six yard line. He uses that twist about as good as anybody does. Oh, he's him. a good, elusive runner. He keeps his head up, picks his holes. Uh, Eric Grover downfield blocking. Monson threw a good block at the line of scrimmage along with Lauren Cook. And there's a first and goal inside the 10-yard line at the 7-yard line. 
The Broncos driving again. Handoff goes to Meyer on a misdirection play, and Meyer's going to be uh, down for about one yard. They'll give him down to the five, the six yard line. That'll bring up uh, second and goal from the six. Black goes out. Yazzie comes back in with a play. We have 541 to play in the first half. The Broncos on top 13 to six. They've scored on a three yard run by Gary Black and a 75 yard kickoff return by Cahia Fisher. On second down, the handoff goes to Yazzie and Lamb meets him right at the line of scrimmage. Ricky Lamb, the linebacker, comes up and meets him. He maybe get a yard. And that sounds like an auto crash out there. When those oh, guys hey, that's, that was a good there. hit. Number 35 also in there, Darren Gifford. Third and goal from the, about the five-yard line, just inside the five, maybe the four. The Cowboys want defense. The Broncos want some offense. Handoff goes to Fisher on that little trap play. And Fisher's going to be short of the goal line. He'll be down about the two-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. We'll see what the Broncos elect to do here. With 4.48 to play in the first half, they lead 13 to 6. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Right about the two-yard line. And if the Broncos could put another touchdown on the board right here, that could make it awful it's tough for the Cowboys to come back. But we have to remember last year when the uh, Broncos went to Kanab, they had to come back in the fourth quarter, scored about 18 points to come back and win that ball game. So anything can happen. And with 4.29 to play in the first half, we have a timeout on the field. The Broncos leading 13 to 6. Running the ball from, or kicking it from about the 10-yard line. It'll be a 20-yard field goal for Yazzie. The snap is down. The kick is up, and it's good. But there's a penalty marker down on the field. Lonnie Fisher talking to the referee. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I think it's going to be against uh, Kanab, the way the Broncos are uh, reacting. Makes you want to go for a touchdown. It appears the penalty is against the Cowboys. Well, the penalty will be declined. It would be against the Cowboys. It wouldn't have given them a first down, so they take the three points. And they lead 16 to 6 with 4.24 to play in the first half. You know, before the ball game, I mentioned that I thought this game would be under 20 points for both teams, but boy, was I ever wrong. The Broncos have come <laughs> on and put on a, a scoring surge. It's been just terrific here in the second quarter. A 75 yard touchdown return by Cahia Fisher. And uh, late in the first quarter, Gary Black scores after about a 60 yard drive by the San Juan Broncos. And so the Broncos are in the driver's seat right now with 4.24 to play in the first half. But the Cowboys are an explosive team and anything can happen. If they can just put together a couple of drives, they can uh, be right back in this ball game. That's right. Actually, when you're only down by six, 10 points, one touchdown puts you right back in it. So Yazzie will kick the ball off from the 45-yard line. Apparently, they did take the uh, penalty, and they marked it off on the uh, kickoff. So Tashini... Daryl Robinson and uh, Chad Reedhead are back to receive the kickoff on the 10-yard line. Yazzie will kick it off. The Broncos on top, 16 to 6. And now there's some discussion down in the field. Coach Arlen Hafen is Disputing the uh, five-yard mark off. He thought the Broncos had declined the penalty and was wondering why they would get the five yards, but the referee was explaining to him that on a scoring play, if there's a penalty, then the extra point is marked off on, or the uh, penalty is marked off on the kickoff. And so that's what the Broncos are doing. They'll kick it off in the 45-yard line. Yazzie will drive Reedhead way back into the end zone. The ball goes through. It'll be a touchback, and the Cowboys get the ball first and 10 on their 20-yard line. So now Clint Glover, uh, Darren Ott, Chad Reed headed in company will try to see if they can get some offense generated here before the end of the first half. 4.24 to play. That's a lot of time. And if they can get a touchdown before the second half and go in 
down by uh, only maybe four points or maybe even uh, three points or two points, it could make a big difference uh, in their attitude when they go into the locker room. Riding comes to the near side, again, split backs. The handoff will go to Ott. He's got some blocking up front. He's going to be down after a gain of about two. There's Yazzie again. again on the tackle along with Jason Tate. Big number 65, Heaton, Gene Heaton, the 6'2", 230-pound senior, out in front leading the way. And I'll bet Heaton causes a lot of pain during the regular season to a lot of players. He's a big one. He came through there and put a block on one of the Broncos that just left-handed him, knocked him on his rear. But the game was only two yards. That'll bring up second and eight for the Cowboys. Handoff again goes to Ott. Ott gets a 25 out across the uh, 28. He goes down at the 29. Fisher is uh, trying to point out to the referee that the uh, knee was down at the 29-yard line. That's where he slipped. That's what I thought. Ott touched down right at the 29-yard line. Be short of the first down. But there is a penalty marker down right in the vicinity where it could either be a holding penalty against the Cowboys. And they're talking to Stacy Yazzie. Could have been a clipping or a holding penalty oh, against the Cowboys. So uh, that'll mark it off. Arlen Hafen a little disgusted on the sideline he right is now. He's having a bad night. Isn't he? Well, when you come into a, a game like this, you're six and all. You're rated number one in your division in the state. You know, you just don't look forward to coming in and being 10 points down close to the half. And uh, the Cowboys, you know, they just haven't been able to put together the offensive drive except for that one time when they marched 66 yards. They've made some mistakes, a big penalty. It'll take the ball all the way back inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Let's see what the, I think it was a holding penalty against the uh, Cowboys. And so that'll be third down and about uh, 17 for the first down. They got a long way to go. A new quarterback in the ball game for the uh, Cowboys. Throws the ball downfield complete to Clint Waters at the 20, at the 19 yard line. Meyer puts a stop on him. The quarterback is Nolan, uh, Nolan Reed at number 10. Reedhead is a 5'10", 145-pound sophomore. Been playing good defense for the Cowboys. Just completes that one for about seven yards. And Meyer, the hit man back oh, in the defensive backfield, murder. really put the stop on Clint Waters that time. He got up a little bit slowly. 2.58 to play in the first half. Waters comes to the near side. Check that. That's number 22 in the ball game. That's Alan Orton. There's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be against the Broncos, the way the Canab uh, fans are whooping it up. Let's see what the penalty marker is. It, now it looks like it might be offsides against Canab, so we better wait before we make the, in, make the call from now. And that'll take the ball back inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. And it'll be third and long again. Riding comes into the ball game. Orton comes out. Again, the quarterback is still Nolan Reedhead, the uh, sophomore. Clint Glover is out. Now, maybe Clint Glover's back in the game. No, it is, it is Nolan Reedhead. Reedhead drops straight back to pass. Now in the draw play, he gives the re to uh, Chad Reedhead. And Reedhead gets out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. It's still going to be way short of the first down. They'll give him about uh, nine yards on the carry, but that's going to bring up uh, fourth and long, and the Cowboys will have to punt the ball away. Good draw play that time by the Cowboys. Oh, that's they good. Set up just fine. Ken Entz, Anthony LaCordy, and Gene Heaton opened up a good hole up front. But now Lad Bunning will have to punt. He'll be kicking to Cahia Fisher and Jason Tate. The high punt. Tate will take it on the 45. Fisher throws a block, but there's a lot of white jerseys down there on the midfield strike to put the stops on Tate. The roughing the kicker call down here, I bet you. Flag in the backfield. Lots of Broncos were going that time. And that'll really be a big break for the Cowboys. They've got 2.17 to play. 
in the first half. And Clint Glover will go back in at the quarterback position. But Nolan Reedhead is still in the ball game. He may be in there at one of the uh, running back positions. So another penalty by the Broncos gives the Cowboys second breath with 2.17 to play in the first half. When you get in there like that, it's sure hard to resist tapping that kicker a little bit. Oh, it is. Well, let's see where they're going to mark it. They'll take the ball all the way out outside the 35-yard line to the 30, 38, and that's where the Cowboys will have it first and 10. So instead of giving the Broncos the ball first and 10 on midfield, they keep the ball first and 10 at their own 38-yard uh, line. Nolan Reedhead is wide to the near side. He's the, he's the wing back. Chad Reedhead and uh, Darren Ott are in the backfield. Now Ott comes in motion to the near side. Clint wants to throw the ball. Now he's going to be a double pass. Reedhead throws it downfield. It's intercepted. David Lee intercepts the football. He comes back to the 40. Across midfield to the 45-yard line. He's at the sideline. He just tipped out of bounds at the 30. He kicked the, go the mar yard marker at the 30-yard line. He should be out of bounds right there. But now the referee, Lonnie Fisher, is marking him out down at the 20-yard line. There was no judge on the near side, but uh, Arlen Hafen saw it. I saw it. He kicked the yard marker at the 30-yard line, and now Lonnie Fisher is saying it will be down inside the 20 at the 19-yard uh, line. The Cowboys tried a double pass that time. Clint Glover to uh, Nolan Reedhead. He's trying to throw it there on field to uh, Clint Waters. The ball was intercepted by David Lee at the 30-yard line. He brings it back to the 20. So that's a 50-yard return by David Lee, and the Cowboys will go on defense as the Broncos had the ball first and 10 at their own at the Cowboy 19. Lee went up in the air about 10 feet to get that. Stepped into it perfectly. There's a bootleg by uh, Jens Nielsen. He's down inside the 10. He may score. He does. <laughs> Next Excellent play call that time by the Broncos. They send Meyer in motion to the near side. Looked like he was going to get it on the uh, reverse. Jens Nielsen kept it on the bootleg. Runs 19 yards for the touchdown. And so it was 1.45 to play in the first half. It's 22 to six, the Broncos on top and we're waiting for the extra point. It's a demoralized uh, bunch of Cowboys down the sideline. They're not used to being in this situation, trailing at the half. Stacy Ozzie will kick it off for the Broncos. Jens Nielsen who just scored will hold. Kick is up and it's good. And so Yazi converts the extra point. 23 to 6 our score 145 to play first half and we'll be back after these messages and the Cowboys will take over first and 10 at their own 24 yard line with 136 to play in the first half this certainly has been kind of a surprising first half we look for a big defensive game and it's been all Broncos on offense. The Broncos have come alive tonight the Cowboys have been pretty much shut down on offense except for that one drive in the it started in the uh, first quarter and went into the second quarter. Our score, 23 to six. It looks like uh, Glover, the quarterback, hands off to Ott. Ott gets some blocking up front. He's out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Fisher comes over to make the tackle. Yazi also helping out and Jason Tate joins in the group as they drive Ott out at the uh, 32 yard line after a gain of about, uh, about seven. They call it eight now. That'll bring up second down and two. And I got some good blocking up front uh, by one of his interior linemen. I couldn't see which one it was exactly, but threw a couple of good blocks. He got a good block on Monson to help him turn the corner that time. So Orton is to the far side. He's the wing back. Glover wants to throw a draw play again to Reedhead, and it's read perfectly by Stacy Yazi. Mance also helping out. Billy Slavin's in there, also gets a hand on him. That'll be a loss of one on the play after a perfectly diagnosed uh, read by Stacy Ozzy. Between he and Myers, you, they're both hit, man. You just, Myers makes the hits in the backfield, and Yazzie's all over the place. 
They'll bring up third down and three. 41 seconds, 40 seconds to play in the first half. We may get a couple of plays off before the half ends. Now there's an official timeout on the field. And I'm not sure they might be. Uh, well, I really don't know why they call the officials timeout. Look like they. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, we have 32 seconds left to play, and the clock has stopped. Glover, the quarterback, hands off again to Reedhead. Reedhead breaks one tackle, makes a good move on Bowers, and he's out across uh, the 40-yard line to the 42. He left uh, Mike Bowers just lying in his tracks right there. He put a great move on him. Yazi and Lee come up to make the tackle. Tate also in the area. They'll give him a gain of about uh, 12 on the play, and that'll bring up uh, first down and 10 at the 42-yard line. 19 seconds to play. We probably look for a pass right here. Unless they elect just to run it out and keep the ball on the ground, they do. Now, Chad Reedhead wants to throw downfield. He's got a man open. That's Orton. Orton tries to uh, make the diving grab. Can't hang on to it. And that'll stop the clock with six seconds to play in the first half. Well, the Broncos have played a near-perfect first half if you don't count the first two turnovers on their first two possessions. But other than that, they've come on and really put on a, a show tonight for the Bronco fans. Quite a few fans over on the other side tonight. And they're hoping for a big Bronco win. A win tonight will mean that they play here next Friday in their first quarterfinal game. We're not sure who the opponent will be. But that'll be a big uh, advantage to have the home field stand. Again, Chad Reedhead wants to throw. Intercepted by Smith. And Smith is drilled from behind by number 22, Orton. And that will end the first half. I believe that's uh, three interceptions for the Broncos in the first half. Four. Four interceptions. So with a score of 23 to, not, 23 to 6, the Broncos leading the Cowboys. We're at halftime. One pass play to Yazzie. But uh, all the scoring's been done on the ground. At uh, one minute left in the first quarter, Black carries three yards. Uh, Yazzie kicks the point after. Uh, in the second quarter, 8.35 left to go. Fisher makes a 75-yard astounding run back on a kickoff. It was just wonderful to watch. I'm glad I was here to see that one. Uh, 424, a field goal by Yazzie, a 20-yard field goal. And at 145 in the first half, uh, Nielsen makes a beautiful bootleg run to the right for 19 yards, and Yazzie gets the point after. Uh, the Cowboys having kind of a slow night tonight, but at 844 in the second quarter, uh, Bunning catches a 28-yard pass, and that's the six points they've got on the board, Neil. How we look for stats so far in the night? Uh, first downs, uh, Knab's got four. Uh, San Juan's got five. We're pretty close there. Uh, Knab's been going to the air all night. They've passed 15 times, completed five of those, but there's four interceptions, one by Schmidt, one by Yazzie, one by Myers, one by Lee. So that's uh, what's really killing their uh, their air game tonight. A defensive backfield for the Broncos have been doing a fine job. They've, they've been in been blanket pluck, coverage all night those long. things right out of the sky. And another thing you got to look at, uh, anytime you get four interceptions in the defensive backfield, you've got to look at the uh, the front four and the defense and the linebackers. They've been putting a lot of that's pressure right, on the yeah. quarterback, and there's been at least two of those uh, interceptions that have been caused by, by pressure from uh, Jason Tate, Richie yeah. Monson doing a good job yeah. up there. So you've got to give a lot of credit to the uh, front four. The passes were right on, but here in this, I mean, that first quarter, the second quarter, the pass has just been going up, and uh, it's up for grabs. How how we got for the Broncos in the first half? Uh, looks like they passed uh, four times, one interception, one completion to, to Yazzie. Uh, that, was a, that was a key play in that right, first drive for the got touchdown. Mm -hmm. As I remember, it was third down and long. Yazzie got the... Got the pass, got about 20 yards in the carry. Put us in great position. And that set up the touchdown. Then with that uh, that fantastic run back, the Broncos, you know, it's been full steam ahead since then. Uh, Kyle Myers having a great night carrying the ball. He's carried that thing uh, about eight times. Uh, Jantz with that great bootleg run. I was really impressed with uh, Reedhead from the other team. He's been getting about eight, ten yards of carry. He just squirts out of there and is doing some excellent running. 
He's got a lot of speed. You know, it, traditionally, the backs for the Canad Cowboys always have a lot of speed. And uh, Reedhead is no exception. Mm -hmm. Ott is not an exception either, but he just hasn't had the, the, the short time. He's been trying to come to the outside. The Broncos have been doing a good job containing that outside run. But uh, the stats, uh, as far as the passing game for the uh, Cowboys, not surprising. Passing 15 times. Uh, they like to pass the football. A little bit surprising that they've only got two runners and they've only uh, gained, uh, what, about 12, 15 yards on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, they're having a, having a tough night tonight against the Broncos. You're watching the San Juan Bronco drill team, the Bronquettes, performing for you at halftime. And they have just finished their routine. We'd like to remind you that these game, the game of the week is brought to you by Sideline Productions. Through the courtesy of these sponsors, Cortez Furniture and Carpet, Parkway, Texaco, so, Parley Red Food Town, Don Palmer's Welding and Blanding, Gopher Foods in Blanding, and the Flower Shop. I'm Neil Joslin with Steve Burtonshaw here at San Juan High School. It's halftime. The teams have just come out on the field. The Broncos with a commanding 23-6 lead at halftime. And, uh, Steve, it was all San Juan in that first half. They just came unwound after that run back by Fisher. Uh, there was no stopping them. Let's see they how came they out in the, the first uh, two possessions, turned the ball over, came back, and then really put on a, a show for the fans over on the other side tonight. And they're looking for a big second half in this ball game. Jazzercise classes, we might like to remind you right now, are being held in uh, Monticello at the Body Salon upstairs on several days during the week at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and at 6 p.m. on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Janine Peng is the uh, instructor, and her phone number is 587-2700. The uh, body salon uh, is jam-packed quite often when they have these uh, jazzercise classes. The first visit is free, and... Uh, if you'd like more information on Jazzercises, you can uh, call Janine at 587-2700. You might add that at the 9 o'clock classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, they do have babysitters available. If you have small children and you can't find a babysitter of your own, they'll have one there at the body salon to help take care of your kids. So I, was, I had an opportunity uh, the other day to be there to uh, film one of the sessions, and I tell you, they have a lot of fun. So if you haven't been to Jazzercise yet, Get on over, do yourself a favor, and see what Jazzercise can do for you. We are about ready to go here in the second half. The Cowboys will receive the kickoff. Stacy Ozzie, as he has done so many times tonight already, will kick off to the Cowboys. They have Ambrose Tashini back, along with Daryl Robinson. Well, now they take Tashini out of the coverage. Darren Ott is back, along with uh, Chad Reedhead and Daryl Robinson, so uh, they will be the deep men. Here we go. 23 to six our score at halftime. Just about ready to start the third quarter. Stacy Ozzy will kick off for the Broncos. The kick is long and it's a squibbler. It's taken at the five yard line by Chad Reedhead. He's out to the 20, out to the 25, out to near the 30 yard line, just short of the 28 yard line. And Stacy Ozzy again in on the tackle for the San Juan Broncos. For the uh, Canab Cowboys at center, they've got Kent Entz, Anthony Lacordi, and Gene Heaton are the guards. Tony Robinson and Kenny Rhodes are the tackles. The tight ends are Lad Bunting and Clint Waters. The quarterback is Clint Grover. The running backs are Darren Ott, Chad Reedhead, and the wingback is Kelly Riding. Set the San Juan defense for you in just a moment. Glover comes up to the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Straight back to pass, wants to throw the football. Right into the middle to Darren, to uh, Lad Bunting, the tight end, and Bunting looks away a little bit too soon, wants to run downfield without the football, drops it, and that'll bring up second and 10. For the San Juan Broncos, they've got uh, Jason Watkins, Eric Laws, Richie Monson, Jason Tate, and Gary Black all up front. Linebackers are Stacy Yazzie and uh, Richard Mance. Also in there is Billy Slavens tonight. The deep backs, Fisher, Lee, uh, Schmidt and Meyer. On second down, the handoff goes to Reedhead. And Reedhead is uh, just... Uh, check that, that's Ott. Darren Ott. Monson makes the tackle in the backfield, and Ott gets up a little bit slowly. This time Monson knocked his shoe off, he hit him so hard. 
No gain on the play. That'll bring up third down and 10. And so the Broncos come out on defense in the first part of the second half. Really fired up. We noticed as the Cowboys were coming out, they were trying to get themselves fired up. Let's have some enthusiasm. They were saying so. Maybe they're a little bit down at halftime. They've got to come out here in the second half and play a ball game. Glover wants to throw the pass. Is batted down at the line of scrimmage and picked off by Robert Mann. Everybody has an interception tonight. Looked like Watkins, the man that got the hand on it. The ball just went end over end. Mance picked it up. And that's a linebacker's dream right there. Mance didn't get much of a run back, but it's going to be first and 10 for the Broncos at the 25-yard line of the Cowboys. And so Jens Nielsen and company will go on offense for the first time here in the second half in great field position. It's like we're staying true to form in this half, way things are... Harry out. Grover, Lauren Cook, Robert Mance, Richie Monson, and Jeremy Liberton up front. The tight end is Jimmy Swenson. John Schmidt is in there at one of the ends. The backs are Yazzie and Meyer. The up back is Fisher. The handoff goes to Meyer. Meyer's got a big hole. Robert Mance just blew his man away. And opened up a tremendous hole for Meyer. And Meyer will get down uh, inside the 20-yard line to the 17, 18. We'll bring up second down and one. Gain of nine on the play. David Lee goes split to the far side. Fisher is the slot man on the far side. Nielsen on second and short will keep the ball himself, and he gets about five yards, fumbles the football, but very alertly, the Broncos fall on it. See who came up with it. Jimmy Swenson, the tight end, goes downfield and covers the fumble, and they get an extra five yards on the fumble. That'll be first and goal inside the 10 at the nine-yard line, and so the Broncos quickly knocking on the door here in the second half. Alert play that time by Jimmy Swenson. It could have been a, a big break for the Cowboys, but Swenson turned it into a little bit more of a gain. First and goal for the Broncos. Nielsen, the quarterback, hands off to Yazzie. Yazzie bowls his way forward down to uh, about the five. Well, they give him about a yard and a half down to about the six. Liberton up front leading the way along with uh, Lauren Cook. Lacordi on the tackle for the uh, Cowboys. David Lee comes in the ball game now replacing Schmidt. He'll bring in the play. Nielsen, the quarterback, sends uh, Fisher to the far side. He's the split man. David Lee is tight on the far side. There's a misdirection play. Now they give the ball to Meyer. He good faking that time. He faked me out. <laughs> Wonder if he got our camera in. Meyer got the pitch out. They fake back in the misdirection to uh, Yazzie. And Meyer gets into the end zone, a seven-yard touchdown run for Kyle Meyer. And Mance and Liberton opening up the hole again. John Ch uh, David Lee also helping out on the blocking. Schmidt also throwing a block, or uh, Fisher, I should say. And the Broncos get into the end zone with 9-14 to play in the third quarter, 29-6 the score. And Yazzie will try for the extra point. We may see some more score in this half, Neil. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it's good. And so with 9.14 to play, following their first possession of the first of the second half, the Broncos jump out to a 30 to six lead and will return. To the Cowboys, they've got Art Robinson and Reedhead back on about the 10 yard line to receive the kick. Yazzie's leg gets a heck of a workout during these kind of games. shoes kicking off <laughs> point after. Squib kick down, bounces on the 10-yard line. Ott picks it up, comes out to the 15 to the 20, and he's dragged down there. Is that Aaron? Aaron Jones, yeah. the man that comes down and makes the stop and gets a little help from Billy Slavens and a lot of other Broncos. And uh, Ott is out across the 20 to the 22-yard line where the Cowboys will take over first and 10. We have been informed that uh, there has been uh, some uh, changes. There have been some changes on the uh, Bronco line. Robert Mance is playing a tackle position in place of Eric Laws tonight. And Billy Slavens is back playing the uh, linebacker position. Slavens has been there all night. He's been doing a fine job. Here comes Reedhead. And again, Heaton, the big man, leading the way. He puts a block on Meyer. Blows Meyer back about four yards. And uh, Reedhead will get about five on the carry. That Heaton is a heck of a player. He I'm sure a he's got blocker. some colleges looking at him. 6'2", and uh, 
get his stats here. 6'2", 230 pounds. He's a big boy. He's ahead of every running play. He's got some pretty good speed, too, to get out in front of those backs. And uh, Mr. Meyer that time was... Uh, Just happened to be in the yeah, way. He was made aware of Mr. Heaton's presence. Second down and five after the five-yard gain on first down. The handoff goes to Ott. Ott tries the right side. He gets around the corner. And again, uh, he's out close to the first down. Fisher makes the tackle. And it's going to be close to a first down. They'll mark him down about the 32. We'll see where they spot it, depending on where they do. They'll mark him just over the 32, close to the 33 for a first down. And so the Cowboys start to drive here with 7.59 to play in the third quarter, trailing 30-6. to six. They need to get some points on the board quickly if they're going to get back in this ball game. Riding goes split to the far side. He'll be covered by Fisher. Glover hands off to uh, Reedhead, and Reedhead gets uh, four or five. Yazi in on the tackle. Schmidt coming up to help out. Also uh, Meyer in there. So a number of players. We've got uh, Eric Laws back in the ball game now at the tackle position as Mance is out of the ball game. So the Broncos defense doing a good job tonight. They've held the Cowboys to six points and they're holding pretty well here in the third quarter. Glover the quarterback. The center is Kent Entz. He's over the ball right now. There's the handoff to uh, Ott. And Ott's close to the first down. He's out. Of, he should have the first down. He's out across the 45-yard line. And that will be a first down. Gain of about six on the play for Ott. Laws goes out, and Mance comes back in. Now, Monson will go out. So the Broncos have up front Gary Black, Eric Laws, Robert Mance, and Jason Tate. Linebackers are Slavens and Yazi. And again, the four deep backs for the Broncos. Glover on uh, first and 10 on the 45-yard line. Wants to throw the ball. Looking downfield, he's got a man open. It's, da it's uh, Darren Ott. Ball thrown a little bit too far in front of him, and it's incomplete. Bring up second down. Billy Slavin's on the coverage. Maybe they ought to stay on the ground. They've been picking up five, seven yards of carry, and uh, the pass hasn't been that great for them tonight, you know? Well, it worked for them a little bit uh, in that first drive. That's how they scored, made a lot of their yardage. But the Broncos' uh, defensive backfield is really tightened up, and the line has put a lot of pressure on him, on the quarterback, uh, Clint Glover. Riding is to the near side. The handoff goes to Chad Reedhead. He tries the far side. He gets around Yazzie, turns the corner, and Fisher's there to make the stop. Out near midfield, I guess he's going to be inside midfield at the 49-yard line, and Yazzie is down on the field. Yazzie tried to make the diving stop, and now Stacy will go out of the ball game, and we'll have a replacement for Stacy Yazzie. Yazzie just plays so intently on that defense that he just kind of wears himself out, you know. And uh, But he does a tremendous job. He's in on every tackle. Lauren Cook goes in at a linebacker position along with Billy Slavens. We might have a blitz this time. We do. There's a handoff to the first man through. It looks like Reedhead and Watkins makes the tackle. No gain on the play. They bring up third down and four, or fourth down and four, I should say. I see now why Reedhead likes to go around the outside. That's tough up the middle there. And so with fourth down and four, the Cowboys will punt the ball. Aaron Jones and Cahia Fisher standing back at the, their own 22-yard line. Lad Bunding will do the kicking. And again, the Bronco defense has held the Cowboys with 5.55 to play in the third quarter. There's a kick by Bunting, a long kick. Fisher takes it on the 13-yard line. He's out across the 15 to the 20. Shows some good speed to get out near the 30-yard line to the 29. And he's brought down there by number 62. And you know, we don't have a 62 on our roster. Number 60, maybe it was, uh, that made the tackle. That'd be uh, Kyle Cloward. 
At any rate, Fisher has the ball for the Broncos out at the 29-yard line, first and 10. Pretty good field position, and he did a good job that time to get the ball out. Eric Grover is the center. Jens Nielsen is the quarterback. Split backs in the backfield. Looks like Black and uh, Meyer. Meyer gets the call on first down. Gets across the 30 to the 32. Gain of three, and Lamb makes the tackle for the uh, Cowboys. Lad Bunting coming up to help out on the tackle also. Five oh eight to play in the third quarter. The Broncos with a second down and eight at their own 31-yard line. Nielsen has a full house backfield on second down. Two tight ends. A handoff goes to Meyer again. He's hitting the backfield. Breaks one tackle. Does a good job to get out near the 33-yard line. Where he's smothered underneath there by a lot of white jerseys. Reedhead and Bunny make the tackle. Also, Tony Robinson coming over to help out on the stop. That'll bring up third down and six for the Broncos. Schmidt goes to the far side. Fisher to the near side, the split man. Third and long, look for Jens Nielsen to throw. He fumbles the snap. And it looks like the Cowboys have recovered. There's a big pile up right there in front of Eric Grover, and the Cowboys do have the football. Sort of the few breaks the Cowboys have had all night long. They get the ball back on the San Juan 33-yard uh, line. And that's their deepest penetration since their last touchdown. Makes you wonder if we're jinxed on that pass down, you know, we fumble it or something. 409 to play third quarter. The Cowboys with the football. They trail 30 to 6. In great field position inside San Juan territory. They give to Reedhead. Meyer does a good job to hold it up and he makes the tackle. What a defensive play by Kyle Meyer. He fought off the initial block, spun around, and made the tackle grab Reedhead from behind. Mean initial block he fought off, too. Kyle Meyer is an animal, boy, the, the hit man. That's what we call him <laughs> all year. He's done an excellent job. And that time he did a, what a cornerback should do. He turned the play in, fought off the block, and makes the tackle for a one-yard loss, second down and 11 for the Cowboys. Glover, the quarterback. Movement on the line, there's going to be a penalty. Wait and see if the Broncos were drawn offside. The initial indication is an offsides penalty, but we'll wait and see. It looks like it uh, was a penalty, a procedure penalty against the Cowboys. Obviously, they drew the, the ends for the Broncos offsides. Jason Tate and Gary Black jumped across. Good question. So the Broncos drive the uh, Cowboys back. After that penalty, second down and 15. Riding is to the far side. He's the split man. Glover wants to throw. He's got a man across the middle. Lots of time. Now he finally gets Clint Waters. And Waters does a good job on second effort to get down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Now they're marking back at the uh, 30. Meyer makes the tackle. And Clint Glover did a good job that time. He saw Waters open initially, then the coverage was not there, or uh, was there by the Broncos. He held up, and Waters did a good job to drift into the middle, and Glover hit him for the uh, gain of about, uh, oh, close to uh, eight yards. Bring up third down and seven. Again, Glover wants to throw the ball. He's got a man open, that's Ott. Ott gets across the 30-yard line, and again, a good play by Kyle Meyer to come up and make the stop. On Ott before he can get much more than a yard on the play. That'll bring up fourth down. Right now, Myers is one of the uh, strong contenders for that defensive player of the yeah, game. He's, having a great game. he's also a strong contender for the offensive player of the game. <laughs> well, it's good to have the depth like that in your team. You know, go both ways and play tough. Myers has been a consistently tough player all year for the Broncos. Stalwart on both offense and defense. Wide man to both sides. Glover wants to throw the football. Lots of pressure, and Jason Tate 
grabs his arm as he goes forward and breaks up the pass. Robert Mance jumps on the ball, but they'll say it was a forward pass. His arm was in motion, and another great play by the Bronco yeah, defense, Tate, that time. You know, we've talked about the San Juan defensive ends a lot this year, Black and Tate, and they just play hard-nosed football, and they're tough to, tough to contend with. So the Broncos take over on downs, first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Gary Black is in the backfield along with Meyer and Fisher in the full house backfield. Two tight ends for the Broncos. Pitch out goes to Fisher. If he can turn the corner, he might have good room. He's got some blocking. He's got out across midfield, down inside the 45-yard line to the 44. Glover comes up to make the tackle. But Meyer and Black did an excellent job to lead the blocking that time. And the right side of that line, John Schmidt, Jeremy Liberton, and Robert Mance did an excellent job. And Schmidt got outside and, and made good yardage, first and 10. At the Cowboy 47-yard line, Big gain that time for Fisher. Jens Nielsen on first down gives to Meyer. Meyer's got a good running room, and he's down inside the 45-yard line to the 44-yard line. Gain of four. Monson leading the way that time for the Broncos up front. These Broncos just keep coming at him. Well, they run right, run left, run up the middle, and then they send Fisher around the end. It's <laughs> Eric Grover's over the ball. He's the center. Jens Nielsen is the quarterback. Fisher's the up back on the near side. Gary Black gets the ball. Hit right at the line of scrimmage and fights forward for about two. Lad Bunning comes up to make the stop. Bunning's been doing a good job tonight on defense for the uh, Cowboys. Also, LaCordy helping out on the tackle. Third down and two for the Broncos. The ball is... Uh, Right near the 40-yard line at the 41-yard line. The Broncos have to get to the 39-yard line for the first down. Nielsen drops straight back to pass. Wants to throw. Lots of pressure. Looking for the screen pass to Black. And Black couldn't get free to uh, get the pass. And so that's going to bring up fourth down and three. And uh, fourth and two, I should say. And we'll see what the Broncos elect to do here. They haven't had a chance to pass the ball tonight. Again, just like Cortez three weeks ago, every time he drops back to pass, the uh, coverage is right yeah. in on the defense. Lots of white jerseys that time, and Jens Nielsen was in a panic to get the ball away and save the yardage. But Jens, for a junior, has done an excellent job this year at quarterback. He's really developed a lot of poise. He keeps his there. cool. And a lot of inexperienced quarterbacks might have thrown the ball away. There's a handoff to Gary Black. Black keeps his feet oh, and drives down inside the 35-yard line to close to the 33-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Broncos, and that'll be first and 10. Good effort that time by Gary Black. He got the initial contact up front by Monson and Cook to open the hole, but he did a lot of it on his own as he broke a couple of tackles. One shoestring, it had been gone. First and 10 for the Broncos at the Cowboy 33-yard line. Handoff this time will go to Fisher on the trap play, and Fisher gets nowhere. Lamb in on the tackle. LaCordy also coming up off the pile, and Bunting also helping out. Looks like Reedhead also in on the tackle. Lots of wide jerseys. Schmidt comes into the ball game now. And we might look for a pass play here. Good time to pass, second down and 10. Before. The Broncos have only thrown, what, six passes, five passes all night long. They've only completed one. Jens Nielsen hands off to Meyer. Meyer is hit at the line of scrimmage and fights forward for about a yard. Lots of white jerseys coming up off the pile. Lamb at the bottom of the pile, along with Bunting. Penalty marker is down, and they're talking to Chad Reedhead, one of the captains for the Cowboys, so apparently it's going to be against the Broncos. 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. No scoring since the opening drive in the third quarter by the Broncos. 
And the score remains 30 to six as we run down to the end of the uh, third quarter. And the penalty will be marked off against the Broncos. That'll take the ball back to the 44 yard line. Holding penalty against San Juan. Second down and long. About 20 for the first down. And this is an obvious passing situation right now. We'll see if the Broncos can get a get an air game going. David Lee is in the ball game at one of the receivers on the far side. Billy Slavens is also in the ball game now. Yazzie's going to throw the option pass. Downfield, he's got David Lee. Lee can't hang on. Now Lee does get it. What a catch by David Where Lee. Where did that come from? Holy smokes, <laughs> I don't believe that one. Let's see the replay on that one. I wish we could. Darren Out was down on the coverage. Excellent coverage. David Lee jumped up, grabbed it with one hand. I thought he just kicked it out of bounds. Somehow or another, he came up with a miracle catch. And that was a 44-yard touchdown pass from Stacy Yazzie to David Lee. And as the third quarter runs out, the Broncos go on top 36-6. to What a play that time by David Lee. I don't know how he caught that football. Neither. That was great. We might have to start naming David Lee the gazelle. What a play. <laughs> So Yazzie will try for the extra point. The kick is up, and it's good. So Yazzie's perfect on the night. And he's added a field goal, and as the third quarter ends, got all year, and he's put the Broncos on top, 37 to nothing, following Stacy Yazzie's extra point conversion. Yazzie kicks the ball off, now a short kick. It'll be taken by Reedhead at the 15, out to the 20. Across the 25 and dragged down at the 25 yard line by John Schmidt. The cheerleaders on the other side getting into the act too. They've just done 37 <laughs> setups. So everybody's contributing. What a pass. I still can't believe that pass yeah, play I by that whole thing, Yazzie man. threw the ball perfectly. It looked like David Lee might have been a little bit too, uh, too short to catch it. He reached up with one hand, grabbed it, and somehow came down with it. And now the Cowboys have got their work cut off for them. They've got to score some points if they're going to get back in the game. Glover is the quarterback. Handoff comes to Ott to the near side. Ott does a good job. He fumbles the football. David Lee picks it up, and he's going to score. Nobody's going to touch him. <laughs> David Lee picked up the fumbled football. Ott fumbled it right out at the 30-yard line. David Lee picked it up, managed to stay in bounds, and runs it 30 yards for the touchdown. And just like that, the Broncos go out in front by a score of 43 to nothing. And Lee, 43 to six, I guess. <laughs> excuse me. It seems like 43 to nothing. It's been a long time since the Cowboys have put points on the board, but David Lee in two plays has really put some spark in that Bronco offense. Who are you going to give that T-shirt to, Neil? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have to see if he can give us about yeah. six or seven of them. Woo. Holy cow. What a game. And David Lee in the last two plays has gained about 74 yards for the Broncos and put uh, four, 14 points on the board. Well, actually 12. Yazzie's put one. He's trying for the extra point right here. Penalty markers down on the extra point attempt. And... Uh, Looks like they're going to mark it off against San Juan. You know, we came into this game thinking it was going to be a great defensive ball game and that uh, we'd probably be under 20 points, but boy, the Broncos have opened this one wide up. Opened it wide up. Okay. <laughs> wide open. <laughs> hey, Lee can really move when he gets out there in that open field. Well, Yazzie now will try for the extra point from the 15-yard line. This will... Be about a 25-yard extra point. The snap is dropped. Yazi picks it up, throws it into John Smith, <laughs> and John Smith has the two-point conversion. <laughs> Holy it's cow! Just when you're all hot, going you're right. hot. <laughs> <laughs> when it rains and pours, and there was no way that should have been an extra point. The ball went behind Chance Nielsen. Yazi just picked it up. John Smith 
very heady play to get break open into the corner and uh, Yazi did a good job to hit him. The two point conversion is good and it's 45 to six with 11 27 to play in the third in the ball game. And the Broncos in the last couple of minutes have just blown this whole thing wide open. We may see a hundred tonight the way this thing's going. We'll probably get a chance to see some extra San Juan Broncos in the <laughs> ball game. And you got a feel for the Cowboys. They travel all the way from Canab. They've had an excellent season, 6-0 and on the year. Number one in their division in uh, 1A. And they come in here and just bad timing. The Broncos are up. You know, this, this is a good time for the Broncos to start peaking just as they get to the uh, playoffs. Yazzie again will kick it off. This time the kick goes uh, down to Reedhead. He'll take it at the seven yard line. Out to the 15, looking for some openings. And he's gonna be dragged down by Mike Bowers. Good uh, shoestring tackle by Bowers at the 21 yard line where the Cowboys take over first and 10. I don't know, it's gonna be a tough decision when we come down to the, the end and have to pick a player of the game yeah. it's it's going to be tough my stat board is just completely scribbled up on one side and hardly anything on the other side tonight Neil well it's been all San Juan they they have really made amends for last week's loss to Bloomfield Reedhead is the quarterback now he falls down in the backfield he ran into uh, Chad Reedhead and uh, it'll be a loss in the play all the way back to the 14 yard line Loss of uh, eight on the play. And the Broncos didn't even have to do anything that time. It's It's been one of those nights where they can Broncos cannot do anything wrong. That last extra point was snapped behind Jens Nielsen. And they still managed to get the two-point conversion in the end zone. So Reedhead on second and long wants to throw the ball across the middle to Lant Bunting. And Bunning is brought down by Robert Mance out at the 28-yard line. Close to a first down. He'd be about three yards. About, now they're marking back at the 27. Be about four yards short. 10.06 to play in the ball game. Gain of 11 that time on the pass from Reedhead to Bunting. Riding comes to the near side this time. He's the split man. Nolan Reedhead is the quarterback. Across the middle again to Bunting. Bunting's got the first down and more. Out across the 35-yard line to the 36. That'll stop the clock for the first down. They'll move the markers. Again, Bunting with a good pass reception. There's that passing game coming back a little bit for the Cowboys. Bunting's the man that caught the touchdown pass of 25 yards for the only score of the night that the Cowboys have put on the board. Orton, Alan Orton, is in the ball game now. He'll go wide to the far side. Bunting is on the near side. He's the tight end. Norlin Reedhead is the quarterback. And penalty markers down. The screen pass to Chad Reedhead. He's got some running room and he falls down. I think we it was had a pretty a, good tackle. I think we had. A, <laughs> I think we had a little movement on the right side of the line. His footing down there, close to a first down. He'll be just inside the 45-yard line at the 44. Penalty markers are down, though, and the referee is conferring at uh, the 36-yard line. They're going to talk to Chad Reedhead, so it'll be a penalty against the Broncos. And so while we've got a little discussion on the field, the uh, score 45 to Reedhead wants to throw. He gets outside. He's got a man downfield. That's Bunning, and Bunning almost has a big play. Jens Nielsen comes along and puts an arm in front of Bunning. And it'll be incomplete, bring up third down and two. Good, good pass that time by Nolan Reedhead. And uh, if it hadn't been for Jens Nielsen breaking that yeah, pass up, it could have been gone. six points. Some substitutions for the Broncos. Now Aaron Jones is in the ball game on defense. And Mike Bowers also in there. The handoff goes to Chad Reedhead. He's out uh, to the 45-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. And that'll bring up fourth and one. 
and I'm pretty sure that the Cowboys will go for it. They're, they've got nothing to lose. 8.55 to play in the ball game. They're down 45 to six. Perseverance in the face of adversity is what this is called. Well, they got a little bit of pride on the line too. You know, they're they're going to go back to Canab and have to look at being six and zero in their league. You know, and then coming down here and getting totally dominated by the Broncos, which is about the first time that that's ever happened. The handoff will go to Ott. Ott has the first down down near the midfield stripe at the 48-yard line. They'll mark him out to the 49. That'll bring up first and 10 for the Cowboys. That'll stop the clock with 8.26 to play in the ball game. You know, in the past, when the Cowboys and the Broncos have played, it's always been a very close game. Last year, the Broncos had to come back from it and score 18 points, I think it was, to come back and win the ball game in the fourth quarter. The year before that, the Cowboys beat them here in Blanding. And this year, the Broncos are wreaking havoc with the Cowboys. Here comes uh, Chad Reedhead. He's got a blocker out in front of him, and he's going to get across midfield to the 49-yard line. Meyer coming up to make the tackle. Darren Ott leading the way on that, uh, that run. Made a good block, but Meyer came up and made the stop after a gain of two. That'll bring up second and eight for the Cowboys. And now Chad Reedhead comes out of the ball game. And into the game goes number 34. That's Daryl Robinson. Looks like Reedhead might have a little bit of a, an equipment adjustment to make. On second and eight, Nolan Reedhead, the quarterback, straight back to pass. Lots of pressure. Gets the ball out intended for Orton. It's a little bit underthrown. Fisher on the coverage. It'll bring up third down and eight. Well, next week, the San Juan Broncos will begin their tournament play, and they will be at home against uh, an unknown uh, opponent that hasn't been decided yet, but they will play next Friday on the 25th, and uh, if they win that one, they will probably be at home again. There's a very good chance. So San Juan fans have something to look forward to next week as the quarterfinals in the state tournament begins. There's Nolan Reed, and he gets free. He's down to the 37-yard line before he's hit hard there. See who makes the tackle. It might have been uh, David Lee and uh, Cahia Fisher come up to make the tackle, but not before Reedhead gets the first down. A good bit of nifty running that time by Nolan Reedhead, the sophomore quarterback. And he gets about 13 yards for the first down. Next week, the Monticello Buckaroos will be down at Montezuma Creek to take on the White Horse Raiders. And Sideline Productions will be down there to follow that ball game. First and 10 for the Kanab Cowboys. Reedhead wants to throw the ball. Downfield, he's got a man open. And it's uh, knocked down by David Lee, Clint Waters, and Lad Bunting in the area. Waters was the deep man. David Lee gets in there and uh, puts a hand up, knocks the ball away. We could have seen another wild play. And that was another very close uh, play that uh, could have gone either way. If a little bit harder, or Lee hadn't got his hand up, it could have been six points. Second down and 10 for the Cowboys. The ball is at the 38-yard line of the San Juan Broncos. Ott gets the call. He tries the left side. And he gets around Gary Black, but he can't get around Jason Watkins. Watkins comes up, grabs him by the waist, and drags him down. Gain of about two on the play. That'll bring up third down and uh, give him a gain of four. That'll bring up third down and six. And 6.41 and counting. Time is running out on the Cowboys. The Broncos will go away with this one uh, with a win. And they're assured of... Uh, a home field advantage next week in the opening round of the playoffs. On third and long, Reedhead wants to throw the ball downfield. There we go. Intended, it looked like, for uh, Waters. And Myers comes up with his second interception of the night. Just stepped right in front of the football, grabbed it off, and uh, gives the ball back to the Broncos. 
Be first and 10 for San Juan at the 31 yard line. And Myers, you know, you got to look at him as a possible defensive player. Two interceptions, lots of hits. And he's done an excellent job tonight both ways. Fisher comes to the, goes to the far side. Schmidt comes to the near side. Shotgun formation for Jens Nielsen. Fisher in motion. Nielsen wants to throw the ball. Long downfield. He's looking for Jimmy Swenson, the tight end. Swenson covered very well by Chad Reedhead. Number 20, and that'll bring up second down and 10 for the Broncos. At least he got a chance to fade back and throw that one. Uh, shotgun gives you a little bit more time. That's the, about the second time they use the shotgun tonight. 45 to six, our score, 557 to play in the ball game. Again, Nielsen will use the shotgun formation. Aaron Jones and Gary Black are in the backfield. Schmidt is to the near side, and penalty markers go down. Before the ball is snapped. And it looks like it's going to be a mark off. They're indicating a mark off against the Broncos. Procedure is the call, and that'll mark it back five yards, bring up second down and 15. So the Broncos looking at second and long now. Meyer the lone back in the backfield. Nielsen wants to throw downfield. Intended for Fisher, I believe. The ball was thrown behind him, and Fisher didn't look like he was even looking for the football. And that'll bring up third and long for the Broncos. And what that does on the incomplete pass is it stops the clock and prolongs this agony a little bit. 5.50 to play in the game. 45 to 6 our score. And after their first two possessions of the game, which resulted in turnovers, the Broncos have totally dominated this football game and made it virtually impossible for the Cowboys to really get anything going. Nielsen again wants to throw. Screen pass set up to Fisher, and it's read perfectly. Lad Bunning, the man that comes up and makes the stop on Fisher after a gain of about three yards. That'll bring up fourth and long, and we'll see if the Broncos punt the ball away. Yazzie comes in, looks like they will. And so the Cowboys will get the ball back with about, uh, well, we got 525 on the clock right now. The Cowboys will get it back. Darren Ott and Chad Reedhead drop back to receive the punt. They'll stand on their own 40 or 35 yard line. Yazzie gets the punt away, a good punt. Here comes the coverage for the Broncos. Ott tries to get outside. Meyer does a good job and drags oh. him down. Inside the 30 at the 29 yard line. You just don't get past Myers, he's tough. Myers has really played an inspired football game tonight both ways. And uh, right now he's gotta be one of the prime candidates for one of those t-shirts. Cowboys have the ball first and 10 at, the, at their own 29 yard line with 4.59 to play in the ball game and uh, a long way to go. Nolan Reedhead is still the quarterback, number 10. Orton is in the ball game in a wide receiver position. The handoff goes to Chad Reedhead. He fights forward and falls across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. Gain of four on the play that'll bring up second and six. You know, it is a good time for the Broncos to start peaking. Last week they looked pretty bad against uh, Bloomfield and lost the 26 to six. And there were a lot of question marks as to whether they'd be able to come back off that loss and really put it together, but they've done an excellent job tonight. They got Reed head on second game. down, hands off to Ott, and Ott is dragged down in the backfield. A great play by Gary Black, the defensive end. Loss on the play all the way back to the 25-yard line. Seven-yard, eight-yard loss on the play. That'll bring up third and long. And Reedhead will be faced with a long passing situation. Lamb comes into the ball game, number 24. Ricky Lamb, number 24, is in the ball game at a tight end. Bunding comes out of the ball game. 
And Bunning has been their main weapon. He's caught about five passes tonight. We'll give him a little bit of a rest right now. Reedhead wants to throw on third and long. He hammers one downfield. He just rifles that one intended for uh, Lamb. Ricky Lamb, if he would have kept running instead of turning around, he might have been able to be a little bit closer to it. Double coverage downfield by Jens Nielsen and David Lee for the Broncos. Pretty good arm there. That's a beauty. Uh, he showed you something that time. He just reared back and let that one fling. And so the Broncos will be, or the Cowboys will be forced to punt the ball away again, bunting in the ball game, standing at his 11 yard line. He'll punt the ball to Aaron Jones, but now before we have a penalty marker down and we're gonna talk about it. Three minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game and it's been all San Juan since the end of the first quarter, or midway through the first quarter, I guess you should say. 45 to 6 is the score. The penalty will be marked off against the Cowboys. That'll still bring up fourth down, but uh, Bunting will be forced to punt the ball from his six yard line. Aaron Jones standing back at midfield, just inside midfield at the, his own 49. Good punt by Bunting. Fair catch by uh, Aaron Jones. And the Broncos will have the ball first and 10 at the 45 yard line. And this might be a good time uh, to see David Lee get in there and play a little bit at that quarterback position, but we'll wait and see what the Broncos decide to do. Looks like they got their first string in there still. And we will be making the uh, decision as to who is the offensive and defensive player of the game shortly. It's going to take a while. We're going to have to wait and see till the end of the ball game what happens and right now we got a timeout on the field by the Broncos and so with 313 to play in the ball game 45 to 6 to score we'll pause for these minutes it's kind of a trick play we won't tell you what it's called handoff <laughs> <laughs> that's one that they worked on Tuesday it obviously didn't work yeah, very need well to work on that in a little more <laughs> back to the drawing board <laughs> Gary Black gets the ball and he's dropped for about a two yard loss that'll bring up second down and long 2.50 to play in the ball game, and I think uh, we're ready to make our defensive player of the game award, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of time before we can figure out who's going to be the offensive player. Jens Nielsen on second and long. Hands off to uh, Gary Black. Black fights forward, and he's out across the midfield stripe inside Cowboy territory down to the 48-yard line. Good drive that time by Gary Black. We're going to give the defensive player of the game to Kyle Meyer, who's done an outstanding job tonight. He's intercepted two passes, and he's been instrumental on a lot of plays. And I, I go back to that one uh, end sweep where he just met the blocker head on and turned around and caught the running back from behind to make the play. Billy Slavens in the ball game comes in motion to the near side. The handoff will go to the first man through, that's Black. And Black will not get the first down, he'll be close. He'll be down about the 46 yard line. Now they'll mark him at the 45, he'll be about a yard short. Well, now they'll give him the first down. First and 10 for the Broncos at the Cowboy 45 yard line. So the defensive player of the game this week for the San Juan Broncos is Kyle Meyer. That'll be eight or ten honorable mentions in oh, there. Oh, hey, you could have given it to anybody. Jess Nielsen on uh, first and ten rolls to the right. And he gets down near the first down. He'd be about a two yard short. Gain of seven on the play. Down inside the 40 to the 30. 36, 37 yard line. Now they're marking back where his knee hit at the 38. So they'll give him about six yards, gain of uh, six. That'll bring up second down and four. And this one is running down 101 to play in the ball game. 45 to six is the score. The Broncos will go into next week's playoff with a home field advantage. Again, Gary Black makes a good move and cuts to the outside across the 40, the 35 yard line down to the 34. 
It'll be another first down. And so the Broncos continue to move with 48 seconds to play. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. They've got time to score again. Gary's moving the ball. Just inside the 34-yard line, first and 10 for the Broncos. And the Broncos have done an outstanding job. You know, but one thing, if there's anybody scouting them from some of these other teams, they're going to look at their running game tonight. <laughs> That's right. The passing game hasn't Been done awesome. a whole lot. They may be keeping that in reserve. It's like Brett Webb in the ball game now to tight end position. The handoff goes to uh, the first man through Aaron Jones, I believe. Check that Meyer, the man that got the football. He'll get a yard. That'll bring up second and nine. 12 seconds to play. And that'll be the last play of the game. The Broncos won't get another playoff. Looks like well, we might have might. a victory dance. Now they call timeout. So obviously the Broncos want to see if they can get another point on the board. <laughs> Don't break 50 too often in high school, you know? <laughs> and I think uh, while we've got a timeout, we better take care of a little bit of business here and remind you that uh, the San Juan Theater in Blanding has a lot of good entertainment, always lots of good movies for you to watch at the San Juan Theater. This next week they've got uh, Cocoon, the uh, latest hit movie by, uh, I can remember the guy's name now. <laughs> Happy Days, what, what's his name? Oh, uh, I know, uh, Howard, Ron, Ronnie, Ronnie Howard. Howard, there you go. And that'll be on until uh, Saturday, October 26th. We'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. Yazzie's gonna try for a field goal. They'll put it down at the 42. It'll be a 52 yard field goal, way short. And that'll run the clock out. Good try, but no, no cigar. Anyhow, the uh, San Juan Theater will have a cocoon until October 26th. They've got Godzilla playing until October 23rd. And beginning October 25th, they'll have Chuck Norris in Invasion. And uh, you can check your local papers for uh, times for those movies. And uh, we'd like to remind you, uh, if you haven't seen a good movie lately, go on out to the San Juan Theater in Blanding, and you'll be able to see lots of good entertainment. That'll end the ball game. 45 to 6 is our final score. We'll be back to and what could be described as anything but a close ball game. It, it was a blowout. San Juan took control of the game about midway through the first quarter and just maintained control and opened up the big lead and just never relinquished control of the momentum throughout the ball game. And uh, we have a real tough to deci decision to make. To we have given the defensive player of the game to uh, Kyle Meyer for an outstanding job tonight. And uh, in running down all the offensive plays and the great uh, things that were done tonight on offense, we've decided that we need to give some recognition to that line. And uh, Richie Monson, the uh, right tackle for the San Juan Bron Broncos, will be awarded our offensive player of the game tonight. He opened up a lot of holes, did a lot of good blocking for the Broncos. And so Richie Monson is our offensive player. Kyle Meyer is our uh, defensive player, and uh, congratulations to those two on a fine game, and congratulations to the Broncos on a big win here tonight. They had to have this one because uh, now with the victory, they do have home field advantage in the opening round of the playoffs next week, and that's a very big step uh, to have. That's got to help. Yeah, it always helps to be able to play at home in the playoffs. And they will play next Friday night. We do not ho know who the opponent will be. It... Uh, will determine will depend on what happens in the rest of the region and it it could be uh, a saturday game talking to morris swenson he's told me that some of the teams from the other side of the state don't like to miss school on friday so they want to have school and come on a saturday so just listen uh, to the radio or to the paper you'll be able to find out who's uh, going to be coming and what time it will be sideline productions will be down in montezuma creek next week to follow the uh, monticello uh, white horse game Monticello finishing out their season next week against uh, Whitehorse and trying to tune up for the playoffs that will be coming up for them the following week. So that'll about do it here at San Juan High School. The Broncos, again, big winners. They go on to extend their record six wins and two losses on the season. Not a bad regular season. And uh, going into the playoffs, looks like they're peaking right now in good shape to do some big things in the playoffs. 45-6, to six, again, the final score. The Broncos over the Cowboys. For Steve Burtonshaw, I'm Neil Joslin for Sideline Productions. We'll see you next time. Good night.